Hi, I'm Kristen, and you're watching Traveling with Kristen, where I take you behind the scenes in the digital nomad lifestyle. Come with me as I travel around the world working from my laptop in over 60 countries. You're watching my travel series on Japan, from Hokkaido and northern Japan, down through Tokyo, Kyoto, and Hiroshima during cherry blossom season. In this video, I traveled to Kyoto for the first time ever to meet up with my friend Adam and do some exploring. We got to see the cherry blossoms in full bloom, stumbled across some amazing hidden secrets, figured out which tourist traps to avoid, argued over where to find the best food in Kyoto, and a lot more. <laughs> but first, I had to get there from Tokyo. And what better way than by Japan's high-speed Shinkansen train? Here we go! Hey. Okay, I have data for you guys. So you know I like facts. The maximum operating speed is 320 kilometers per hour, 200 miles per hour. Test runs have reached 443 kilometers per hour. to Kyoto. That was a really nice trip. I can't wait for my next bullet train. Adam and I first met during the Ski Week Japan and he turned out to be a pretty good ski instructor and travel buddy. Are you ready Adam? I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Just send it. <laughs> the first thing we did was rent bikes because it's my absolute favorite way to see a new city and get to know the lay of the land really fast. But first we had to figure out how to use these weird bicycle vending machines. So our plan was to bike all the way from Kyoto to Arashiyama, which is about 10 kilometers each way. Let's go to Bamboo. The bamboo forest, the monkey hill, and the Joji uh, temple, right? What is that called? Naji Castle. <laughs> I'm so off. I'm not going <laughs> to Japanese. I'm going to stick with English and Spanish. <laughs> of course, we started straying from the plan almost immediately as soon as we passed a beautiful shrine and gardens full of cherry blossom trees near the Hanazono station. Eventually, it was on to Arashiyama. So pretty. We're almost to Arayushima. I can't pronounce any of these. This is the river. I feel like I'm in Thailand. It's unbelievable how busy it is and how many boats are in the river. Like the rivers here are so shallow. Normally you can walk them, but right now we've got a bit of a reservoir going. So here we go. We were headed towards the bamboo grove, but again, we stumbled upon something pretty unexpected. I don't know what to expect. <laughs> don't stare at the monkeys in the eye. Don't touch them, don't feed them. Monkey's going crazy for some food. hanging out with monkeys, 
riding bikes and seeing the sunset at Arashiyama River were all completely unforgettable experiences. I'm still pinching myself. To be honest, the bamboo grove was pretty overrated, but I'm sure the vibe is a lot different there in the early mornings maybe without so many crowds of tourists. Then it was time to head back to Kyoto for dinner before dark. So Japan is known for having these 24-7 convenience stores on every corner selling breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 7-Eleven or Lawson? 7-Eleven, every time. Lawson, Lawson is where it's at. What do you love about 7-Eleven besides that? Well, Free Wi-Fi, bank machine, do you like their they, food more? They're not just a, a shopping outlet, they're also a bank. And this is their bank. See this nice little big Buddha. So you can actually bank. It's a seven at, card right there. <laughs> see, I'm in it for the food, and I'm going to say that the Lawson has better food, and they're cleaner, and they, they're better stocked. We're going to find out. And the ongoing debate about which one is the best is a hot topic of conversation, especially amongst foreigners and expats. So for anyone who's watching who's been to Japan, which side are you on? Let me know in the comments. After dinner on the way back home, we walked by yet another shrine. Kyoto is full of them. Welcome to Mikane Shrine, one of many beautiful shrines in Kyoto. It is officially 12 30 a.m. and we're just walking around this beautiful town let's go do an offering is that what we're doing? adam taught me some temple etiquette and showed me how to do the traditional water offering ritual adam's going to teach us how to do the cleansing ritual in japan you take a fair bit of water in the cup. We don't wanna, we wanna have enough of five things. The first is to wash our left hand. Then we wash our right. And we pour a bit in our left hand, just cupped in water and we wash our mouth with it. And then we wash our left hand once more. And with the remaining amount of water, we wash the stem Clean for the next person to use. And we put it down. We bow. We clap. And the clapping is to make noise so that the gods or whatever they can hear us, so that they make it over there. Stay tuned for part two of the Kyoto vlog, where I'll share with you all my favorite Hanami Sakura spots. And we'll check out the night markets in the famous Geisha district of Jian. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a weekly video of Traveling with Kristen or Digital Nomad TV. This guy's like super chill. He's like, I don't care. I think he's a grandpa. No, I think he's young. You can tell by his fur. Oh, because his fur is not matted. He just looks like a baby. Not a baby, he's like a teenager. Oh, it's neither. It's like he's stoned. <laughs>